Hey guys, Yule here. So today's video is a part two of Patty's garden tour. And if you have not seen the part one of her garden tour, I will post the link down in the description below. So uh, just a little bit of background, Patty um, and I, we met as a landscape designer and a client about six years ago, and then our relationship quickly progressed into friendship because that's what gardening does to people. And um, with very little experience and very um, little knowledge, she turned her garden into this amazing space after just a few garden consultations. And um, so she actually keeps going and she keeps working on it. And I love her plant selections, love her colors in her garden. And I think with years to come, it's only gonna get better. So I'm actually already looking forward to doing a spring garden tour. But um, for now, um, this is just the end of summer. Right now, September garden tour. And you can see it's still doing really, really well. Um, I just wanted to apologize for the audio of this video because I only have one microphone and I'm kind of not equipped to interview people and ask them questions. I thought that you could see, uh, you could hear my questions, but apparently you can't. Anyway, I'm <laughs> going to work on that and make it better. Anyway, let's check out her garden. So we just came around from the front and we're now over in what I'm trying to create is a moon garden with all white flowers. So um, this part of the house was, uh, the grasses were the only things that were here. It was grasses and hostas. And so um, I have split these grasses two, two or three times already in the last four or five years. Um, and they're not easy to split. They're very durable. And uh, they're miscanthus. Um, morning light. Morning light, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I say that like I'm confirming as though I know, but actually I was asking a question. So, um, so there we have echinacea here. Um, this is a brand new plant still in its pot that my friend Yulia gave me. And it's so funny because it's the exact one that I've been looking for. Um, it's a delphinium and what is the name of it again? It it's says magic fountain. Magic fountains pure white. Um, and it's just beautiful. So, um, of course, in the spring, I'm going to be rearranging a lot of things because I have a different picture in my mind of what's going to happen. But this is also beautiful, I think, at this point. Um, so, Echinacea, I have some Angelonia, this beautiful Delphinium music for you to view by. Um, and more, these are dahlias that are snow country, and I had, they were about this tall. And I went out to get some hardware to stake it to the wall. And by the time I came home, they had broken off. So um, that's gardening. And so those will be coming back, I hope. But if not, they still look pretty. The, the foliage is still really pretty. Um, and then this is the water feature. It is so beautiful. So that was given to me by a very dear friend. I helped her with her gardening, her garden last year, and uh, she gave me a gift certificate, and I bought this with the gift certificate. And uh, it reminds me of her, and I love her. So it's it's really another one of those wonderful things about gardens is that the, the sound is just so perfect. Yeah, it's very calming. Do you lose a lot of water? Actually, yes. I have to um, fill this up almost every few days if it's sunny out because the water does evaporate. Um, so that's something, but it's kind of minor to me and I think it's so beautiful and so peaceful that it's worth it. And all of those things that are work, that are errands or chores, it's an opportunity to be in the garden, so it doesn't really bother me, which is one of the reasons I'm kind of not doing drip irrigation because it gives me an excuse to go out and spray and, oh, well, I have to be out here, so, oh, gosh, I guess I'll just have to enjoy the beauty of them. Um, so down here is um, Artemis Powis Castle, and um, they're not doing so great, I think, because it's so wet. Um, and also, Yulia, you were saying that it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't like, this is another <laughs> highly trafficked area. Another reason, you know, we needed peace for, in the midst of noise. 
And um, this is a beautiful panicle hydrangea. I forget the name of it, um, but it, it turned pink, so that's okay. But it's gonna be moved over to the corner, I think. Um, but it's, I love it. This is the first year I've had it. Yeah, really pretty. Um, and then this is a Dahlia Snow Country that did not break off before I got the stake, which is attached to a hook. I don't know if you can, uh, it's not a hook, it's a completed circle screw thing that I don't know the name of. And there's invisible fishing line connecting. Um, and yeah, it's, I know, I know, it's so beautiful. So, um, this is another one of the grasses that was split. I think Yulia has like, three of them? Three, three of them, yeah. yeah. And then um, over here we have the snow in summer, which in the springtime is just covered with these beautiful, beautiful, white, tiny, tiny flowers. And this is what remains after the blooms are done. And I'm hoping it's going to be creeping its way throughout because it's a beautiful silvery base uh, to the garden. More white echinacea. Uh, this is supposed to be white. I don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen to it. Sometimes they hybridize. Yeah, oh. It's a different color. Yeah. Yeah. White. Yeah. 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 Um, and another echinacea. That little black hole back there, black spot, is where I planted a white clematis. And it did not do well. So. Those are the things you don't always hear about in gardening videos. So I like people to hear about that stuff. Um, here we have in the back uh, a hydrangea, which has some sort of fungus on it this year. Um, and Yulia was saying that we do, we have had some pretty strange winters so that this type of hydrangea doesn't always bloom. And this whole area has had a problem with that. So nobody had my uh, mop head hydrangea this year. Yeah, mop head, okay. Um, so this is all with the exception of uh, the mandevilla that's on the obelisk. Um, yeah, yeah. Everything here is a baby from the front border. So um, the grasses, the quinine, another airplane, <laughs> uh, the echinacea, um, the gara is all from the front. The only thing that uh, is new is the dichondra. Again, I, I wanted to use it as ground cover, and I just I love, love, love it. And uh, the peonies are, you know, done for the year. Here's another pink gora down here that, you know, popped up. And um, then I guess we go to the window boxes. Mm -hmm. Is that what you want to? So get this chair out of the way. Um, These are my favorite. You know, I keep talking about this. So the color scheme, um, this is so perfectly you. Can you just talk about the color scheme a little bit? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So when we uh, moved in here, the, I wanted people to have like this, um, like I said, moment of peace as they're going throughout their day. And I'm kind of an emotional gardener, I guess, because I, I react, I wanted to have a reaction of, of calm and softness. And um, these colors have that effect on me. And I even had, uh, at the first year, I had some black-eyed Susans in the front, which are really bright yellow. And they were like, no, look at me. It's so exciting. Like, you gotta look at me. And I thought, no. So I put them over by the driveway. Um, and I just, I love these colors. Every time I'm out here, I just, my, I can feel my circulation <laughs> slows down. Blood pressure is going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely beautiful, so elegant. And being a health coach, that's kind of important, so. Yeah. So yeah. And the, again, the fragrance. Yeah, I wish that you could smell, it's so pretty. And again, like this is, well, these are two plants because they're different colors, but they're, you know, one, these were like, I got a flat of, what is it, 24 in a flat? For something like $14. And this is what happened. And I do have to um, hand water these, but um, again, I don't mind. I come out in the morning and I just spend time with them. Oh, and they're green cordyline again. And, um, and angelonias of varying colors. 
and the beautiful, beautiful alyssum that are. I'm still copying this, this <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah, usually I have. Um, this is the first year that I kept it simple because usually I have pots everywhere here to cover up the cement. And there are dichondras spilling out and everything, but it was very, very, very labor intensive. Um, and I knew this year I wasn't gonna have the time, so I just kind of kept it simple. Okay, so now we're in the back of the house with another car. <laughs> and um, this is a one-way street, so I guess you could call this the one-way garden because there's signs everywhere. Um, and this, this was started, I think, two years ago when the town came in and they redid the Belgian blocks. And my husband and I came running out and said, please don't plant any grass seeds here. We're going to put a garden here. So they obliged us. We dug up all the rocks and um, we, you know, tilled the soil and put some manure in. And um, I took everything here is except for the lavender is from the front or the side of the house, every single thing. So you have catmint, gara, little blue stem. You know, this was this was a baby two years ago. And um, the cleomays came here by themselves. They popped over, unless they might have been in the clump of dirt that mm -hmm. came up with the with the grasses. I did not know that about the cleomays, wow. Yeah, I, didn't, I did not bring these over and plant them here. I know. So, um, I mean, maybe I did accidentally, but I didn't consciously do it. Um, but again, when I was weeding, I could identify the leaves, so I just left them alone. Um, and then we have the, um, so it's just repeated the same thing. And alyssum, that, I think that popped up. I don't that think. That is so pretty. Yeah. Oh. I, and I, you can is see across the street, plants? too. No. Let is me it? see. Well, the one across the street, mm. that wasn't planted. <laughs> So let me see how much of this is one plant. Let me start from the. Oh my word! I'm oh, gonna put wow. this guy down. Yeah. yeah I think it it's one all plant. one plant. Yeah. yeah. I know. They love the sun. And I also had to make sure that everything that was here did not require a lot of water mm -hmm. because it was just going to be too much. Mm -hmm. So after the first few weeks of um, watering them. I just let, let them alone because I wanted to experiment and this is what's been happening. You know, the Cleomays are towards the end of their season and they're going to drop more seeds. I love that. Um, but they, they really did great and these are lavender that I got from Trader Joe's. Oh, is that what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, I see. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's right. That's so pretty. And uh, this Russian sage over here, I'm telling you. Oh, look at the big bee. Oh, that's really big. I know. <laughs> it's a little for forbidding, foreboding. Um, yeah, this was about this big when I pulled it up from the side. And it's interesting because it was not the first attempt. Some of them were too woody. They were too old and some were too young. So I just played around and I planted a few and this one made it. So, you know, again, I wanted to let people know about the ones that don't make it and that you just keep, yep. just keep trying. And that's why I like using plants from my own property to experiment with because I don't have to feel guilty about losing the money I feel guilty enough about losing the plant. I don't have to feel guilty about losing the money if, I, if it doesn't work. Um, more fever few, more every single one of these plants is from uh, the front. And we have the arborvitae, which has just been incredible. You know, this spot gets so much sun all day long. These were planted before we got here, and I would say they were about, I want to say between half and a little bit more than half the size that they are now. And um, thank goodness the people that planted them put in a, a, an irrigation um, hose. And we have them on a timer and they get an hour of water every single day during the spring and summertime. And they really are water hungry. So um, they're a great screen if you have a small property. They're very narrow. I'm just trying to stay out of the bees way. Um, they're very narrow and tight and give you that, and they're very luscious. They feel like a blanket. So um, yeah, we really love them. And they're, they're thriving very, they're doing very well here. So that's it.
and another plane. Maybe one of your viewers is on the plane right now. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time.